Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and this is a question I get all the time. It's a great question, and just like most things in beekeeping, there's a couple different ways to go about it, and I think either one of these options is fantastic. Um, maybe in extreme areas, though, you might want to be cautious. What is better, screen bottom boards or solid bottom boards? I have pretty extensive experience with both of them. I've had as many as 50 screen bottom boards going, and now we run about 300 solids, and well, you know, just a handful of screens. And there's reasons for that. We're going to fix it and get into that here in just one second. By the way, if you're not from the south, fixing means about. All right, we are about to go through this. So let's start with the pros of the solid. Now, by the way, if you see a red check mark on either side, that means we like it. If there's an X at the end of it, that means I think it's a con. Now, there's, there's a couple other things I might have missed, but I think I've covered everything. So with the solid bottom board, and we have one right here. This is one I made myself several years ago. Um, now, most solid bottom boards, by the way, won't have this in-between section here. This was for a experimental, um, what is now our TDN colony, um, which is our uh, TDN, stands for temporary double nucleus and so you can have a colony on both sides however we've changed the design a little bit you definitely don't want to have that middle bar in there on regular colonies because you'll crush bees down in there if you put a comb over the top of that and they'll uh, glue it down with bee glue and it just makes it harder to do things but you know there's nothing super special about this uh, solid bottom board it's just solid and it's a bottom board you know it's you know there's a, uh, really that's the that's the only con I can think of with the solids is the fact that there's just not a whole lot of extras you can do with it. It's and they got no gadgets. But it is cheaper typically to buy. It's cheaper to make. It's stronger because it's, you know, it's solid. It has fewer drafts, obviously, and, you know, in extreme northern areas this can be a big deal. Now with the screen bottom board we have right here, you can throw in this insert which has its merits and reduce some of the drafts, but you know, this is not going to reduce the drafts that, you know, it's not going to keep out the drafts like this bottom board right here, the solid one will. So, you know, if you're in an extreme northern area, that could be a big deal. Now, I've got buddies down here in Tennessee that have all of their colonies on these things, and they say that they really like them. They just put the insert in there for winter, and, and they're good to go. But so with the solids, you have fewer drafts. You have better protection. What I mean from, by that is not really just weather, but also ants. If you're in an area where you have ants or other bug problems, um, that can be an issue. Um, we really don't have issues with those here in Tennessee much. I mean, you might have a couple ants, but if your hive is being taken over by the ants that I have in my area, then you've got a weak hive that has some issues. Now, there's a possible treatment advantage, I think, with the solid bottom boards. And what I mean by that is when we are using oxalic acid, or thymol, or those products that are kind of um, putting a natural vapor through the hive or off-gassing through like formic acid, then there could be some disadvantages to having the screen bottom board. Maybe it lets too much of the product out. There hasn't been a ton of research on this. There are, is some out there, and opinions are like noses, but that's something to consider. Um, I do think for oxalic acid vapor, having a solid bottom board is better than having a screened one. So you know, that's the solid side. There's really not a whole lot to it. The biggest drawbacks, I think, um, is, I guess, would be the no gadgets, um, which we're fixing to get into the gadgets on this side of things. And then also, I guess, if you're in a really hot area, then it might be really nice to have a screen bottom. You know, if you're in an area where it's hot all the time, then, you know, having one of these babies really might be nice. I know beekeepers who say that. I'm kind of in between. See, in Tennessee, we're, we're just victims of circumstance. Um, I'm a victim of circumstance. Right, so we've got the northern areas, <laughs> and you know they're throwing punches, and we got the the stuff coming off the Gulf and other places, and you know out west, and they're throwing punches, and we're just kind of right in between. So it really just depends on who punches the hardest on what we get weather-wise. Now on the screen side, it it takes more money and time to build these things, and depending on where you get them and how good you are at sourcing your material, it may be a lot more expensive than this or it might not even be that bad but in my experience it, there's a little bit more time and um, definitely um, some more money if you buy them from the supply companies for these right here um, but it's very similar I mean it's basically 
like that board except it has a cutout and then it has this screen in here. Now this is not eighth inch hardware cloth. It's a little bit bigger so you can use a couple different things but you definitely want to make sure that a honeybee can't pass through it because then you, I mean, you don't want bees going in and out of your bottom board. You also don't want bigger bugs getting in here as well. It's a little bit weaker and for most of us it's no big deal. I mean it's, it's a little bit weaker now, if you're trucking bees and picking up colonies all the time and moving them around from location to location, that could mean a, a big deal to you. So, um, the drafts, um, it can be nice to have that ventilation sometimes, but when it's really stinking cold out, it can be a big problem. And, you know, there's heat loss um, due to that. Um, one of the things I'm concerned with, um, again, is they're vulnerable to pests. We have that new hornet possibly coming from the area of Washington State, and hopefully they'll eradicate that sucker. But, you know, we're very seldom that lucky. And I'm thinking, this is just, you know, came an opinion right here, so, you know, do with it what you will. But it is possible that it would make colonies more attractive to pests like hornets if they can smell more pheromones coming out of the bottom, which is one thing um, I think that could be an issue. But they provide hot weather relief. So these are cons up here, obviously. They provide really nice hot weather relief. I know a couple guys down in the southern part of the states, and I mean, they think that these things really help them out in summer. And I think we need more research in this area. I know in our summer, it's it's our hardest part of the season. Uh, forget winter. I mean, goodness, summer is much harder on our bees than winter here. And they're they're constantly dealing with dirt, so there's not as much nutrition. And then on top of that, there's a lot of heat. They're having to cool the hive, so they're still putting in a ton of work, but there's not the nutrition coming in. So, uh, you know, for us, summer is a big deal, so these things might be advantageous for you. Now, this is up for debate, but some people feel like there's an advantage of varroa loss due to them falling through the screen. Now, some people like myself are a little skeptical because I've used them and I've never seen anything significant. Um, in regards to varroa levels and having screen bottom boards and just letting the mites just naturally drop off. The mites, they're not very good at some things, but they're really good at walking around on bees and staying on bees, it seems. And there's a certain degree of varroa that die as they get older, and I'm thinking that probably the bulk majority of what we see fall through here naturally is just old mites. Now, is there a small percentage that does fall through and die because of these? Possibly. But is it worth all this? That's up to you. So I don't know if that's a, a major con or uh, a pro or not. Again, loss of pheromone. Um, if you have this wide open, I think there's some pheromone um, loss because of that. Sometimes you'll see a cluster of bees underneath um, the hive. Um, a lot of times they're confused. I don't like having a screen bottom board that's wide open when you're installing a new colony. Definitely have that insert in there. Definitely. Um, but you know, some people have raised that issue, and I, I could I could agree with that. Light retards brood and wax production. Now this is true. Um, if you have this wide open, and you have a brand new colony in here, and they haven't drawn any of those combs, they're going to be very reluctant to draw those combs. Into com in comparison to a colony that has a solid bottom board, bees like it dark. They prefer it dark in there. It's amazing that they can do the things they do in the darkness. But they. It's obvious from just keeping bees, and other people can back me up on this, is that bees don't like to draw combs in areas that have more light than opposed to those that have um, that, that are in a darker area. They're going to build away from that light. So keep that closed up. Um, now as far as the brooding goes, if they have the option of going to a second box above or being in the bottom box, they're going to go to that second box more readily, is what I've observed and other beekeepers have as well, when you have, again, that light, the queen... It's going to go away from that. So that's just something to think about. All right. Now, it, one thing I do like is it allows mite drop observation. So when we do a treatment, oxalic acid vapor, thiamol, formic, whatever, we can stick this tray in here. And this one's filthy as I'll get out because I had pollen patties on that got stuck on there. But I can wash this off, and then I can put canola, vegetable oil, some type of oil like that. And then as you do your treatment, and then you can observe the count that, um, that you find on here in 24 hours, 48 hours, all that stuff. It is really handy. I like that about these things. And that's why I don't think you can say that 
you know, this one's better, that one's better. Sometimes it really depends on your area, but a lot of times it's nice to have um, a couple of these around at least just to just experiment with them. I'm really hoping to have about 40 or 50 colonies one day. We can just have for test on this channel, and every one of them is going to have one of these babies so we can really monitor the mite drops on a, a daily and weekly basis. All right, so there's potential treatment Poten uh, there's potential treatment advantages with one of these and that's the powdered sugar method now I am NOT a fan of powdered sugar uh, method I've tried it in the past I think for the amount of mites you drop with it it is way too laborious um, but that doesn't mean that some people can't use that a little bit uh, especially if the colony's brewless it might work halfway decent um, I'd still rather do oxalic acid vapor myself because it's still very gentle on the bees and does a very good job in a brewless situation and um, maybe there's other treatments in the future that that'll be handy to pass through a screen. Obviously, you can't do powdered sugar very well with a solid bottom board because it just clumps on the bottom and just allows it to pass right through all that powdered sugar. I don't really like that method that much, though. So. And then, you know, you're going to use, I already talked about the size of the, the hardware cloth at one eighth inch. So, one of the things we're going to be showing you in a build, we're going to actually be building one of these that's a little bit... Um, different than probably what you're used to seeing. And it's nothing that's extremely brand new, but we're going to be showing you how you can control small hive beetle larvae and potentially kill some beetles with a screen bottom board like this. And we're going to be um, building it and you know, showing you how you can build one as well if you have a couple tools or your grandpa or somebody um, has some tools to let you borrow. Don't cut your finger off because of one of my videos, please. I don't want to hear that on the comments below. Really like your videos, but I lost my index finger trying out your new bottom board design. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, please don't. Um, so we'll be showing you that. But really, the biggest pro with the screen is that you can do more science-y stuff with it. And then some ventilation. That's really the differences between solid and screen bottom boards. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opinions out there. But really, you can't just say this one's the best. Because it really depends on where you're at. If you're up in really, you know, north uh, Ian Stepler area, where it's really stinking cold, I'm not sure this is a great idea for you to be running through the winter. Now, maybe there's a way that you can wrap this, and then that makes it work great for you. I don't know. I've never lived up in Canada, and I really don't plan on it either. It's too cold. And then, uh, you know, then, then there's southern Alabama, where this could really come in handy because it's hot all the time. My granddaddy was telling me it's like 80 degrees the other day. I'm just like, goodness gracious. shouldn't be that hot around Christmas time. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions on solid bottom boards, screen bottom boards, or anything related to that, let me know. Leave them below, and stay tuned for how you can retrofit either one of your screen bottom boards or how you can make one from scratch that's going to help you with your small high beetles and using those pollen patties. Thanks for watching our videos.